Why hello. Welcome back to another vlog. I'm drinking a kombucha. I used to never drink kombucha. I didn't really like it so I never bought them and it wasn't until this year that I've been obsessed with them. I don't know. I don't know if my taste buds changed or what but what is this one? This is the Guava Goddess and I'm into it. I just got back from my hair appointment and I just did a little trim. I love my hair lady. She does such a good job. She took off some of the heaviness. My hair is really, really thick. And so she thinned it up. No, she didn't like go crazy, but she did thin it up a bit and it feels so much better. I was sitting there when they're washing her or when she was washing my hair. My hair gets so heavy when it's wet. Like, I was like, can we please take off some of the heaviness because I'm getting a headache sitting in this chair. <laughs> She's like, absolutely. My hair is really thick. I am very fortunate and lucky to have extremely thick hair and I love it. But sometimes, especially when my hair gets long, I have to like thin it out a bit because it's a lot, especially when it's like in a bun just on top of my head. Anybody with thick hair, you know the struggle. So I ended up taking today off because I had my hair appointment and um, she usually does it in the morning. So I usually just take the rest of the day off because why not? So I took today off. I really want to add a few new card designs to my website or my Etsy shop. I have, I think there's like two designs that I brought to the crafter that's not in my shop yet, which I cannot remember what, oh, it's um, the black and white mushroom and I made a lily card because so many people are asking me if I had a lily card at the last craft fair, or not the last one, but the one previous to that. In order for me to put that on my website, I need to take product photos, which I don't believe I have. And I don't think I ever took them of those cards. And today the sun is out. I thought it would be the perfect time to do that. So I'm going to do that now. And then I really want to do, I have like three of these glass frames that I still want to paint on. And even though I'm not bringing back the frame design, I still want to make them and sell these three before I switch to the hanging frame that I want to do. But I think I need to start a drawing. So I am doing a drawing for my cousin and his wife because his wife graciously took Mark and I's wedding photos and they did it as a wedding present and it's so much work so I wanted to do something for them so I'm going to draw their dog which I'm actually very excited about they have a really really good photo that they're using and I need to start that but I need to lay the grid out before I can do anything so I'm probably gonna end up doing that after I put those listings up
<laughs> I already have a grid made, which I'm very confused about. I don't even know when I made that grid. I'm a little worried that I forgot about a commission or told somebody I was gonna do a drawing and forgot about it. I honestly have no idea why there's a grid made. But I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, but I wanted to show you or I guess at least explain how I blow up a grid so I can draw. Let me see if I can find that elephant photo because that would help explain it. I found why I made a grid. I am drawing a picture of my friend's cat. That's my neighbor's truck. But I'm drawing a picture of my friend's cat. Her cat passed away like last year. I told her that I would draw her a picture of her cat and I just haven't gotten to it yet. But I'm, it's, I'm gonna do it, I swear. So this is a picture that I've been working on for like three years. It's an elephant and I'm gonna try to zoom in. So I basically, this is a eight and a half by 11 photo and I made a one inch grid on the entire photo. So when I go to draw it, it basically blows it up. Okay, there's a little bit that you can see. I'm almost done with it. How exciting is that? So when I'm doing a grid when I'm blowing it up, I usually will blow it up to be a two inch grid because that generally fits on this size paper, which is, I don't even know how large this is. So this grid right here, I'm hoping you can see it. It's really, ugh, it's really, really faint, but you can kind of see the pencil in here. It's a two inch grid. And if I generally do my portraits, oh, people portraits, I hope I'm explaining this. It's, it was super complicated for me to understand at first, but I've been doing it for so long that it's kind of just second nature at this point. For my, oh my gosh, I'm gonna let my neighbor's truck pass because it's so freaking loud. If somebody is asking for somebody that has a person in it, I do a lot of like wedding commissions or a lot of like kid commissions, like somebody of their like niece or nephew or like that sort of thing. Those I do in eight by 10, or sorry, not eight by 10. I do it in 16 by 20. And then if I'm doing a pet portrait, I usually do them square. So I'll do like a 10 by 10. So when this blows up, because you're doing two inch grids, it's basically like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, yada, 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 all the way up to 20. And that's how you blow it up. I'm hoping that makes sense. You're just basically taking a one inch grid and you're doubling the size or tripling the size, but that's how I blow them up so I can draw them using a grid. But the 10 by 10 square grid was already done. And I think I'm just gonna use that to do the drawing. And then I just need to print out the photo and crop it. Usually people will give me like an 8 by 11. I have them when they're like giving me pictures. I have them send me multiples so I can like kind of pick the best one. But I do go ahead and I crop the photo basically to make it 10 by 10. And most people are fine with it. I personally have not had any problems with that because I give them a heads up. It puts it says that on my website that it's like a standard size. I don't do anything smaller. I don't do anything larger. I mean, I could, but I generally don't. All right. Well, 
I think what I'm gonna do is I have a friend who's having a baby shower oh, in like two weeks, two or three weeks. And I am going to do a like woodland animal watercolor for her. So I went ahead and I sketched some creatures that I need to watercolor. I only have two right now. I'm probably going to end up doing four. But there's a little hedgehog. And then there's an owl. And I think I'm going to paint them separately. And then scan them and put them in Photoshop. And hopefully that works. Because I want to blow it up. But first, I need to see if I can paint this hedgehog. I think I'm going to try to do that first. And hopefully it comes out looking like a hedgehog. It's not going to be realist. I mean, it's going to be like kind of realistic, but I think it's going to be more like cartoony, whimsical, nursery-like. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do this. Okay guys, the hedgehog turned out so cute. I'm so happy with it. I think I need to add grass around it, but I'm kind of scared to do that. So I want to show you before in case I ruin it, but this is it. He needs a name. Look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> oh, I think I need to like now that I'm looking at it, I think I need to darken down here a little and maybe like here, but I'm so happy with it. I usually really struggle painting from my imagination. I had like <laughs> 10 different like inspiration pictures of hedgehogs, so I kind of mashed that and crossed my fingers and hope that it turned out looking like a hedgehog and it does I'm so proud of myself because I struggle so much with doing that I I don't even know I think I shared it on YouTube but I honestly don't remember what social media platform I shared it on so if I'm looking at a picture and recreating that picture I can draw anything but once you take that reference picture away from me and I only have my imagination the bets off I cannot draw to save my life when Mark and I went to Tahoe we saw a bear and I didn't because it was so such a fast like interaction I wasn't able to take a picture or anything we just kind of drove by and Mark asked me if I could, you know, like recreate that bear in that drawing. <laughs> and I tried and I hope I have the picture. I'm going to insert it. I really hope I have it. But it is hilarious. It looks like a five-year-old trying 
to draw there. It was so funny. So this took me a while. It took me a long time to draw because I was like mashing pictures together and trying to make it for nursery but not like trying to make it realistic. So this took me a really long time to draw. But as far as painting it, it actually didn't take me that long at all. So I'm like so happy with myself. I don't know if I could get any more realistic without having like an actual picture in front of me that I can recreate. I don't know if I can do that. I mean, maybe I could, but I think I would really struggle just with the light and shadows and everything from my like memory bank of what a hedgehog looks like. Because this is for a nursery, it doesn't need to be super realistic. So that I'm grateful for. <laughs> because I don't know if I could do it otherwise. Okay, I am going to end the video here. I think I'm going to actually fill out some craft fair applications. Some of the ones for winter are starting to open up. So I'm trying to get ahead of it and apply for those. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!